Physics has always been interpreted as one of the hardest subjects to understand conceptually. However, it is only true for quantum mechanics and theoretical physics. As we dive into classical physics, which is a branch of physics that is that uses principles governing the macroscopic motion of objects used by and the derived from Newtonian laws by Isaac Newton himself. He was a famous physicist in his era. We are able to calculate certain motions of macroscopic objects like in engineering, which is really crucial as an engineer, you need to be able to design and analyze certain problems. In this case, we will be looking at a projectile motion of a mac macroscopic object being launched and exerted from a spring system. I am Brandon William. I am I have already taken calculus one and physics one I am I am currently in robotics. I am a very dedicated and determined student to pursue aerospace engineering at Purdue University this fall 2025. And in this speech I will be informing you all how to determine and derive the motion and displacement of an object after it has been launched from a spring system. So as we can see, there's two main points and two main methods to derive. One of them being physics using energy and the other being calculus using derivatives. So without further ado, let's dive into the two main critical methods in how to solve this particular problem. So as we can see here, using energy and physics, if we take a look at the mechanical energy, it equals the mechanical energy initially equals the mechanical energy finally. So Mechanical energy con consists of gravitational potential energy, kinetic energy, and elastic potential energy. In this case, there is no gravitational potential energy because we're starting from height equals zero, which makes it zero. And in this special case as well, if our block gets exerted at time, at the time and place where the amplitude is zero, this makes it's so that there's no elastic potential energy as well because elastic potential energy consists of the constant of the spring times the amplitude squared and in this case it's zero so there's no amplitude during this oscillating spring so it leaves us with only kinetic energy which is perfect because it consists of one half mv squared which is one half mass times velocity squared if we solve the mechanical energy in the beginning and mechanical energy final which is basically just the kinetic energy initial and kinetic energy final, like as I explained before, why there's no other energies besides kinetic, we'd be able to find the velocity that this macroscopic object exerts after, that the spring exerts on this object after it gets launched, if we can find the velocity. So after we find the velocity, we can plug it into the equation to find delta x, which gives us change in x, which is displacement. So velocity times time gives us, gives us displacement. As we can see here, an example is by Matthew Anderson, who received a physics degree at Oregon University on his YouTube video titled The Loaded Spring Launcher on November 20th, 2014. We can see in this exa exact example, he uses energy to solve the velocity and the displacement. Moving on to the second main point and method, we can use calculus to derive this particular problem as well. We can see that derivative is basically means rates of change. So if we are able to plot certain points on a position and time graph, we can make a parabolic shape of the motion of the block as it gets exerted in that period of time after it gets exerted from the spring and we can find the derivative which gives us the velocity. And like the spring, we like the spring system using energy, we can find the displacement using the instantaneous velocity from the derivative times the time, which would equal the displacement. In this graph right here, by three blue, one brown, which is a YouTuber, um, in his video titled The Other Way to Visualize Derivatives on May 19, 2018, he shows a visual that what a derivative does and how to find instantaneous velocity. In conclusion, in summary of all of these methods discussed, it is evident 
that solving classical physics problems is very versatile as we can use physics and calculus. The physics method is able to use certain information and data that is provided for us to calculate the velocity and then easily determine the displacement. While the calculus way, we have to be able to graph and plot points on the position versus time graph table to get the velocity and then get the displacement. Although both of these methods are very similar, it is very different in a way as well. We can calculate the velocity, but it's different way of approaching the problem. It is very crucial to understand this process as in engineering, it is a crucial role for them as well. They have to be able to do and implement physics and calculus in both of their time. Calculate, use physics and math of calculus to calculate their problems in data analysis and designing. Thank you.